Police and protesters square up face to face across the nation in the wake of police brutality and the mistreatment of minorities. What would the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So what accountability starts when, when you come if through, I'm you doing something wrong, you make an A. And if he doesn't correct me, that's the problem. So we Those guys look just like I do. You know, George Floyd looks like my family. You know, I got tattoos like them. I get pulled over. I get harassed. I get profiled when I go in stores, I get followed, you know. I experience the same thing because I'm black in America, so I get it. This is a global movement for justice and equity and freedom for all of God's children and to recognize that black lives once and for all matter. The death of George Floyd has fueled these recent protests after being in police custody on May 25, 2020. George Floyd was handcuffed and on the ground when a Minneapolis police officer held his knee to Floyd's neck. One of his last words was, I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Honor! Honor! Respect! Respect! Love! Love! Power! Power! You're not honoring the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement. You're not protesting anything running out with brown liquor in your hands, breaking windows in this city. This city has never been more nervous in my little 45 years. You know why? Sure. We united. Because we united. Because this city always uses the legacy, the honor of this being
legacy of civil rights in America. This is chaos and we're buying into it. This won't change anything. We're no longer talking about the murder of an innocent man. We're talking about how you're burning police cars on the streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Go home. The family of a 21 year old man killed by an Atlanta police officer once that officer fired. Jimmy Atchison was shot in January as an FBI task force attempted to arrest him over a stolen cell phone. Well, the family says he was innocent, unarmed, and hiding in a closet, and they want the officer, Sung Kim, fired. On January the 22nd of 2019, my son Jimmy Atchison was unarmed and surrendered. Yet was shot and killed by former Atlanta police officer Sung Kim who Atlanta Mayor Keisha Bottom allowed to resign. The scars and pain that my family had been through in this situation uh, has took a toll on us, but we're gonna to continue to fight for justice. My son, Jimmy Life Matter. My son had two children. Uh, he was a father, he was a brother, he was a son, he was a grandson, and my son did not deserve to die in this matter. Justice must be served. Where there's no justice, there's no peace, and we're gonna to continue to fight. For my son, Jimmy S. Lord, I just pray right now for every single person, whether they're opening their hands up in the air or not, the Lord, you would fill them with peace. Profess the Lord in name, Holy Spirit. Break off the spirit of fear and the spirit of death and murder. You deeply love every single person here, regardless of their background, of how they know you, how they don't know you. Where they have daddy issues, where they have mommy issues, God, Jesus, you want to be their everything so they don't have to hurt, they don't have to be angry, they don't have to be violent, so they don't have to have a bitterness towards you. If anyone here is struggling with any of that, Lord, break it off of them because you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. It's our duty as the white community even to come together and support this just cause because people are dying. People are getting murdered in the streets. And this is just, this is unconstitutional, this is unfair, this is just, it's murder. It's not a mistake that we were born during this time in history. I believe we're the next change makers. We're going to shift the entire trajectory of history and politics in the way that we engage civically. Civil obedience and civil disobedience is necessary. And here you can see we're doing a little bit of both. We are changing the tide in the course of history and I'm here in support of letting it be known that Black Lives Matter and that I'm also an advocate for racial reconciliation. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Justice! What do we want? MODs, it's all about meeting our demand. Protesting, negotiating, sit-ins always come with demands. If you want us to actually go ahead and get over with this, you guys gotta go ahead and meet our demands. Number three, really simple. All we have to do is deconstruct and reconstruct the judicial system and the police policies as well. It needs to be affected today. I'll put that shit up. But we still have to go to the polls. We in front of City Hall right now. Of course, George Floyd brought us together, but we've been having issues in Atlanta for a long time. And that goes with Jimmy Atchison, Nicholas Thomas, Javis Benjamin, Deltavius Griggs, the names go on. And it's time for the people that we've elected as officials to do their job or they're on their way out. So to see so many young people come together and be a part of this movement means a lot. And we've got to keep adding fuel, keep fighting, and keep going. And it's about Breonna Taylor, and it's about Ahmaud Arbery, but it's about the thousands of Atlantic and Georgians that have been victims. <laughs> Mayor Bottoms, I got a message for you. You better get out here with the young people and get off TV. Yeah. 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 Because we got platforms too. Yes, we do. 
And our platform is bigger than yours. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't just talk to this camera. We talk to that camera, and that camera, and that camera, and that camera, and that camera. And we will come where you are. So either you get down here and talk to the people, or we'll see you at Guilford Forest. To my white brothers and sisters out here, you know what measures we're talking about, the ones that y'all normally get. The escalation that you mean. And let me say this again to the white folks that are out here. Shrill spit. White supremacy is at the root of all of our ethnic problems. Are you agree? Well, how about we get a sea of Caucasians out here because white supremacy is truly your effing issue to deal with. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I think y'all, I'm not trying to cause dissension. I'm trying to say it's your neighbors. It's your schoolmates. It's your family members. It's your, it's your parents. It's your parents. It's your problem. The reason that we have these historical monuments without a damn marble is because they were laid brick by brick by our ancestors. That old white supremacy mindset is slowly but sure dying off. Say honor! Honor! Respect! Respect! Power! Power! Right now! 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 We gotta stop killing each other. We gotta stop fighting each other. We gotta stop being whores. We gotta stop being pimps. We have to change within our own race first. We can't change them if we don't change ourselves first. If I see you and your child hungry, instead of me going in my refrigerator and giving what I can, I'd rather belittle you, sister. We gotta stop belittling each other. We gotta stop killing each other. We gotta stop fighting amongst each other. The change starts within our race. If this doesn't change, then what else is gonna happen? What else do we need to do to get a change? I grew up with a lot of white privilege, not gonna lie. And then when I came to college, you know, it really opened my eyes to Georgia Southern that other people exist. And I started seeing all of the shit and all of the crazy things that people of marginalized groups, people of color, black people specifically go through. Privilege is real. We need to acknowledge it. We need to use our privilege to speak up for people who don't have the same opportunities as us. as it is, check on these little small states, South Carolina, Tennessee, in the little pockets. Check out those officers. What are they doing to people? You think if I get pulled over at some Hobunk gas station in South Carolina, it's just going to be okay? Let me see your license registration. No, it's over for me. Three weeks ago, we had a bunch of white dudes with AK-47s protesting haircuts. No tear gas, no rubber bullets. With AK-47s on their chest. You think if I come out here with an AK-47 on my chest, they're going to be like, oh, it's all good? And we're not protesting haircuts or a curfew. 
you. We're protesting our life. We just want to stay alive. We need a lot of change, but it's only going to happen if we actually do the work. Who do we call when the cops are the ones doing the killing? Who do we call? That's a, that's, I'm not, that's a rhetorical question. I'm asking you that. Who do we call? For the longest, I was opposed to the marches and the rallies because nothing was being changed. But after the most recent videos, I cried. I cried tears of anger. I cried tears of pain. And I cried tears of frustration. I commend everyone for being out here. Because if it's not for the march and the protesters, we wouldn't be causing the chaos and disruption needed to channel everyone's attention and focus on the problems at hand right now. I've been going around and asking lots of people what are some of their demands and having them write it down in this book. Some people say we should defund the police. Some people say we should give the police a higher salary. Maybe that will help eliminate the stress on them. Some people propose solutions like police should only be able to work for up to 10 years. They believe that after 10 years they've gotten so complacent into their ways they're going to continue with their abuse of a power. The police and every politician is a public servant. They work for us. They work for us. Every cop has sworn to protect and serve us. So why are they on the other side of a fence with their weapons pointed at us? Their backs need to be to us and facing the military and telling the military to remove their tanks and get the hell out of our city. that we've learned in history books and we're still going through it today is different than now that we're in it. We're done listening to those who came before us because that didn't work. So we're taking matters into our own hands and we're trying to make our voices heard. We need to be united. The people who are united cannot be divided. No peace! No John, no peace! This is my life. This is our life. This is Woodstock for us. This is real life. It's like they only hear us when we bring back fire with more fire. You have to learn how to speak the language of your enemy. The enemy right here don't know no love, don't know no peace. So we got to fight fire with fire. This enemy does no war. And this is what we're giving them. The only way you can overthrow a government is by war. Ain't no fucking peace. Ain't no shit like, oh, let's go change policies. You can't change white policies. It's their policy. There's no place in this country, there's no place in this planet where any government has been changed without war. More justice, more peace. More justice, more peace. More justice, more peace. More justice, more peace. More justice. We understand that there needs to be a change in the system, but the other side has to understand us as well. Both of us need an understanding. 99.9% .9 of them come here to do what they're supposed to do. Speak with us, speak with each other, pray with each other, talk with each other. It's the 1% that show up later in the day while all the rest of the protesters have been out here all day sweating, standing here on their feet, just like we are. They come out here at that 7 o'clock hour to ruin the message that the 99.9% .9 have tried to convey all day with us. Y'all made me sick!
City since the day I was born. Never have I ever been so disgusted. I am mad. I'm not the mayor. I'm nobody. I'm just an actor. You stand up where you lay your head at because a man got killed. I've lost many to police violence, to human violence. Understand y'all pain, trust me, I understand. But is it worth all of this? My kids was down here yesterday. I got hit with a rubber bullet right there. I got shot at My 10 year old got hit with a bullet in the chest and he kept walking. If y'all want to act stupid, that's on y'all. I've been to prison, I've did my time. Give these folks the respect and let them go home to their families. I appreciate your perspective. Just drop it, okay? What happened to the man is over. Now let me ask all of y'all a question. If it was me, would it look like this? So please, everybody, get together, have a hand, let's do this for real, because they're trying to show us they love us. They can't take a knee, but they can show us they don't take a prayer for us. Let's do this, y'all. And Lord God, there are many of our brothers and sisters here who are hurting, who are angry, righteously, Lord God. And we know in your love and in your compassion, you continue to be with us and you continue to help raise their voices to bring justice. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. To bring peace. Yes, Lord. And to bring equality. Yes, Jesus. Lord God, continue to be with all of your children out here. Yes, Lord. And keep them safe. And may they continue to bring the message to the world. Yes, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give it up. Give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. This bill is already in the process. This bill will officially make it so that we have a database where uses of excessive force go into and we look at them side by side by side. So our only similarities are no longer their last names, their first names, their mothers grieving, their communities grieving. But the actual facts in the case, please, as you march today, as you protest today, have your demands for House Bill 636 to get a hearing in the House and to be passed in the Senate. I thank you for coming today. Please continue to speak up for justice. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And he talked about not fearing any man. For his eyes had seen the glory of the coming of the Lord shortly before that. He told those gathered there in Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee, if something happens to me here, now, don't stop here in Memphis. My young brothers and sisters, don't stop because of what happened to George Floyd. Because there's much more work to do to establish justice and equity in this nation. Don't stop 
until police reform happens and police accountability and chokeholds are banned. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop until neighborhoods, historically black neighborhoods, are stabilized and invested in instead of gentrified. Don't stop. exercises their citizenship right to vote. Don't stop. Don't stop until there is equity with black and brown people in the boardroom and in the C-suites. Don't stop. Don't stop until we have equity in our educational system. Don't stop until we address criminal justice reform. Don't stop until our people can afford an education and not have to live the rest of their life paying back student debt. But don't stop until they pay the debt on the check that my father presented in 1963 on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, until there is never again the breath taken out of the life of any black and brown person in this nation and around the world. Don't stop, my brothers and sisters. No justice, no peace.